Hey guys, AF67 here. Uh, I'm going to do a few Dreamcast videos, of course, since you know I'm a Dreamcast freak, well, fan, I would call it, um, with some of the accessories that are for the Dreamcast. I mean, not really accessories, but, you know, things that are for the Dreamcast. First is the Sega Dreamcast controller. This is a blue swirl, not a red swirl, so get used to it. This is a European or PAL version. Not much, not much difference. Let's start off with the size of this beast. It's huge. <laughs> it's as big as the original Xbox controller. Maybe a little bit smaller. But, you know, Microsoft ripped them off. Now, the design is... I like it. It's really cool. Uh, it feels like a gaming controller. Yeah. It has very hard... Not really, yeah, it has a very good sturdy grip to it. Not, well, you know. Not grip, but, you know, everything at Sega is very sturdy. It's not easy to break. <clears throat> but yeah, it has a very smooth plastic to it, which I think is nice because, uh, you know, don't want something sticking to your hands. Now the back, uh, this is all cave-ins here. Well, now, I don't know who I call cave-ins. These have these open spaces so you can grip around the controller like that. It helps you hold your hands in. Now, let's go on with the controls for this thing. The D-pad is... You know, it's a good D-pad, don't get me wrong, but the damn thing's so slippery. If you're in the, like, crazy moments in the game, your hand slips off, you're like, oh shit, gotta get back on there. Uh, I don't know, I hope, I wish Sega made a better D-pad for this thing. I mean, it's good. It's not bad, but it could have been improved. I imagine, I'm not sure if it's true, but I think there might be, uh, I know there's third-party companies that make better controllers, but I wonder if there's any, like, grips you can get for this. There is. Someone tell me. Alright. Then your start button. Very hard plastic as well. It pauses your games, start your games. Basically, that's it. And it looks exactly like the power button. Well, the power light. <laughs> For the Sega Dreamcast. If you flip upside down, it looks like it. When you're looking at it. I'm not sure what the hell Sega was doing with that. To that. It's one of the more interesting looks of a bu start button. Usually most start buttons are here for most consoles today. But this one got down here. Alright, now we're going to start with the buttons that control most everything. Next to the analog stick. A, B, Y, X. Now, these buttons work fine. And if your button gets sticky, it's not easy to... I mean, it's not hard to take it apart. So, yeah, good luck with that. Now, unless you noticed, maybe a lot of you have, these buttons are not at the same height. I mean, they are, but they, some of them bulge out a bit more than others. The X button is about the farthest in. The Y and A buttons are a little out, because you can see the little inside here. The B button's out the most. They want to keep the buttons at the same height, but the buttons themselves are all made, like, straight down. So, if you know what I mean by that, the B button is bigger than the X button. These two buttons are about the same size. I mean, it's not a big problem, but if you went from Xbox to this, which I highly doubt the younger generation would do, they'd be like pushing this button, for example, be like, what the hell is going on here? Anyway, on the back of the controller, uh, you probably saw from my earlier, is the triggers. There's your right trigger, there's your left trigger. Now, they work just fine. Now, the problem, not a problem, but the sound of these things are really loud. I imagine a lot of you know what I mean. Not a problem, but it's really weird. It's very hollow. Now, the analog stick, which is the most important thing of any 3D game console. Now, this one's relatively new. I got this back in December. Uh, yeah, new out of the box. Very nice. Because you can tell it's brand new because the studs are actually still on there. They're not worn away like most uh, controllers now. Yeah, so it works well for an analog stick. And the problem, sometimes the problem is, it's made of a hard plastic, so if you have one that doesn't have the studs on it, you might lose your like, grip on the damn thing. And right now, I'm kind of losing my grip. I'm used to, like, PS3 or whatever, having the very, like, non-slippery grip. You know, this controller is awesome. I mean, for its time, it's good. Today, it's still damn good. And make sure you get a controller that has a working analog stick. I'll show you the controller in a minute. It's not working. Well, I mean, the third controller, I'll show you. 
Let's see. Another cool, interesting thing about this is, is this little cord here. It's not usually normal for a controller to have the cord come from the bottom. It usually come from the top and over. But uh, because of the design of the controller, uh, most people will do it like this, which is really annoying. I don't want that cord to be holding on to. So you go into the back, and there's that little grip thing there. I never noticed this until like about a year ago. You can click it right up there. And there you go. This isn't in your way. There you go. That is pretty cool. Very nifty, Sega. Now these, this open spot here, there's another spot back here too. Uh, this is for your memory card, or VMU. Right here's your VMU. This is a blue version, a blue version, a blue colored uh, VMU. There's many colors you can get. These hold up to about, I think, 200 blocks, maybe less. I don't know. Uh, I don't really count uh, how many blocks are in here. It says Dreamcast. Make sure you're using a Dreamcast memory card. All right. Then you just, they have lithium batteries, so you can replace these if the battery dies out outside the controller. You just put it right in the controller. And there's a little screen on there now. Uh, it'll show like what data can be, is being saved. Like say you're saving a game, it'll say saving or save okay, blah 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 blah. And when you're playing the game, it'll show like uh, Quake 3. It'll show Quake 3 or the symbol. The Sonic Adventure will show the Sonic Adventure symbol along with characters. I think in gameplay it shows like a chow walking across for some weird reason. Uh, Time Stalkers, it has a picture of the title. House of Dead 2 does the same thing. Shows the characters in Time Stalkers. It's, it's really cool. Now the back one is either for another memory card in case you get full in this one or a rumble pack, which is cool. I mean, this rumble would be nice. So yeah, that's basically the default controller. So uh, yeah, pretty damn cool in my opinion. Now the other one I have, uh, I don't know if I told you, they come in different colors. This one is a blue one. I'll show you, hold on. This is the blue. This is a blue one. I got this one a while back. Uh, the cool thing about this is, or not really one of the coolest things is, it's kind of ho it's hollow blue. It's not. Like, it's like the N64 blue. You can see the entire like motherboard inside the controller. If you look at it, it's it's big, but the space down here. Oh well. Analog stick. Uh, you can see it has the grips, but they're really worn out. So if they're if they're shiny worn out. I mean, analog stick works fine. I'm not really slipping off it. It's really... It's good. D-pad, the same thing. This one's a little tighter. Hmm. A, B, Y, X buttons are a little bit more worn in because they're not clicky. And this one's dirtier. This was used. Uh, I'll have to clean this out sometime, but I'm too lazy right now. Start button works fine. This one has a red swirl. Mm, yeah. This, I got the blue memory card with this one. It's the same one I just had, but you know, I got this with it, which makes it look cooler. No rumble pack, same exact click clipping thing up here. So yeah, there's your blue controller. Now hold on, I'm gonna get the uh, other controller, which is a good example of what controller to not get. Okay, this is the ant controller you don't want to do to it. Now you can't see it, I don't think. But this controller is in really bad shape. I mean, yeah, this works fine. This works fine. These work fine. The buttons are fucking dirty. The inside the X, Y, A, B buttons are really dirty. And in the creases where the, the big circle is, that is dirty. Uh, back buttons work fine. Red swirl. Now the analog stick, anyway. Uh, <laughs> if you get a Dreamcast controller, make sure the analog stick is works. Like... It sounds like all right, but when you're using it, your finger will slip right off it. I'm not. I'm not even purposely doing this. It's actually kicking me right off it. And is that normal? Make sure you, if you get a controller that's Dreamcast, make sure the analog stick works. I guess some idiot must have taken this apart and tried to mess around with it, or he, whoever had it, broke it. I mean, I got this with my Dreamcast and. Before, it used to do this. It used to go around and click. Uh, it used to go like... Every time I would try to do this. It would just like click over here. And I took it apart to see what the hell the problem was. And like a little tiny part inside the analog stick configuration was uh, like cracked in half. So that's probably what happened. 
So this controller, make sure you don't get one of these controllers. If it has a broken analog stick, uh, don't ever get it. And you want to make sure it's not broken, just kind of test it after you buy it. Like Soundground, for example. And if it doesn't work, just bring it back. So, uh, yeah, make sure you don't get this controller. Make sure your controllers do this. All 360 circle 360. Yeah. So, this is my Sega Dreamcast controller review. A little bit longer than it should have been. So, this is F67 out. I'll be doing the Sega jewel cases next. And I think that's all Sega stuff I have on the Dreamcast right now. But uh, eventually I'll get the keyboard for it. And maybe the imported Dreamcast gun. So I'll see you in the jewel case review.